This segment brought to you by Kansas Farm Bureau, the voice of agriculture. To join today or more information, go to kfb.org or find us on Facebook and Twitter. Okay, we're back. Oh, what? You, what <laughs> I don't did know. you pour on your Wheaties this morning? <laughs> well, it's the middle of April. I don't know. When. You just got April fever be, or what? what spring be, fever? Beware of the Ides of April. No, that's March. So. Well, the Ides of April are worse. You know, that's tax day. So, yeah. <laughs> oh, that's, that's right. Yeah. So, if you survive till now, of course, my sister, the accountant, you know, is busy writing out all the extensions for people, you know, up until midnight <laughs> on tax day. And so, um, this is her. Uh, I won't say downtime, but it's like, you know, the first few months of the year are so hard and then slacks just a little bit. Hmm. I'm hoping to get her out to Kansas, come visit. We'll have her as a guest star on oh, that'd be good. around Kansas sometime. Sure. Well, we got a great story coming up, and one of the things I'm hoping to get my sister and a lot of other people out for is our July events at Fort Wallace. And one of the highlights, um, our friend Jerry Thomas will be unveiling a bronze sculpture of Medicine Bill Comstock, who was a storied scout. And I want to talk a little bit about scouts. I was doing a program with Jane Pierce um, a year or two ago in Oakley, and we were talking about scouts who scouted for the Army, and this is still, you know, the Army still has scouts. And the kids just think Army, and they think guns, you know, and they think, well, they're out there in the plains, and they're shooting Indians. And I'm like, their ability to communicate is one of the things that set them apart. So the scouts knew a lot of the Plains tribes' languages. They knew their customs. So it was that ability to avoid trouble that made them very valuable. You know, their sense of direction, their understanding of where to find water, where to find forage, you know, um, all that stuff. But their ability to communicate, and that's still a huge deal in, ter- you know, training and recruiting scouts with mm-hmm. the Army, the ability to communicate with different cultures, different languages. So rather than just thinking you've got this, this wild guy out there without a clue, no, they tended to be very bright, very interesting, very individualistic, some real colorful character. Some figures loom large over the landscape, transcending time and death, entering the realm of legend. Such a figure is Medicine Bill William Avery Comstock. In his short life, Comstock, who was chief scout at Fort Wallace, set himself apart, said George Custer. No Indian knew the country more thoroughly than did Comstock. He was perfectly familiar with every divide, watercourse, and strip of timber for hundreds of miles in either direction. He knew the dress and peculiarities of every Indian tribe and spoke the languages of many of them. Custer also described Comstock as perfect in horsemanship, fearless in manner, a splendid hunter and a gentleman by instinct, as modest and unassuming as he was brave. He was defeated in a buffalo hunting contest by his friend and rival, William F. Buffalo Bill Cody. He was believed to be part Indian, but was not. He was actually a Michigander by birth, from a prominent and educated family, but he let the rumors of his frontier birth and his upbringing flourish, likely understanding the PR value of such stories. The legendary scout will receive a permanent home at the Fort Wallace Museum this summer, when artist Jerry Thomas unveiled a life-size bronze statue, ensuring that the figure will always cast a shadow on this landscape. Jerry's paintings are also on permanent display at the museum, along with artifacts from the original fort site in the Flores Weiser room. In the past weeks, the museum staff and volunteers have been helping Jerry construct the base for the statue, a lot of work itself. The statue is being set at the front entrance to the main museum and will be unveiled on July 8 in conjunction with the Great Fort Wallace and Western Kansas 1867 Exposition, July 6 through the 9th. The expo will feature tours of the scenic byways, a symposium on events of 1867, an encampment featuring dozens of reenactors, a concert by Michael Martin Murphy, and a final ceremony at the Fort Wallace Cemetery. Well, that's it for this week. I'm Frank. I'm Deb. And we'll see you somewhere around around Kansas. Kansas.
Closed captioning brought to you by Ag Promo Source. Together we grow. Learn more at agpromosource.com. And churned homemade ice cream. Let me tell you, Kansas is more than tornadoes. We're the best part of Dorothy's dream.